You don't need to consume porn to actually masturbate. I know it goes hand in hand, usually, but one can exist without the other. So does the Bible talk about masturbation? Reading the Bible from its historical context, sex in the Bible was heavily geared towards procreation. So if you masturbate, you spill the seed, then you lost the opportunity to procreate. So that would be considered wrong. Just like if you were to have recreational sex without the intention of procreation, then that is also wrong. Now, scientifically speaking, masturbation has its positive effects. And talking about prostate cancer, to make sure that your equipment works, you are encouraged to have blood flow into the penis, and that would keep your erectile function good. How you get the blood flow into the penis? One would be masturbation, right? If you don't have a sexual partner, can you masturbate without porn? Certainly, use your imagination. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it, it's totally fine. What the problem is in terms of porn, now we're gonna go into the science of it. We know that porn is detrimental to the brain in terms of dopamine and it affects people's behavior, intimacy, and relationships. It truly affects the intimacy and expectation of sex. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes it could affect reality versus expectation of sex. So if you've consumed a lot of porn and you expect it to be a certain way, and in reality, your partner is not the same as your expectation, it could be underwhelming, which means your real partner cannot surprise you anymore, can't excite you anymore, and then it affects your relationship. So that is a danger of porn towards your relationship. If that happens, and it has been shown that sometimes porn can be so out there in terms of what they expose you to, that vanilla sex, like real world sex, is not as exciting as what you have been used to in porn. So that could very well affect your relationship. And then it would drive you deeper into the whole porn thing because nothing else can satisfy you in the real world. It's a risk. Am I saying that's gonna happen all the time? No, I'm just saying sometimes it happens. And sometimes we have to be aware of these things. But scientifically speaking, evidence shows it's more harmful than good when consuming it. So that's something you have to consider for yourself. If you watch porn, insert whatever it is that you want for porn. <laughs> if this thing causes lust in your heart, then maybe that's a problem that you want to address. And when they say maybe, because it's up to you, nobody can force you, right? If you think you're fine, no amount of nagging from your partner telling you that it's not okay is gonna make it not okay for you. You would stop probably to maintain your relationship, but it's not like you're stopping because you feel like it's bad for you. So that's why it's very important to really self-reflect on the effects of these things on you, on your partner, and on your relationship. Because once you see it's starting to affect your relationship, like, for example, something so obvious, you are making love to your partner and imagining someone else in their place, means that you now have disengaged from that intimate situation with your partner. And that is a problem. And we know from research that is one of the problems of porn that your real life partner becomes boring compared to the women in porn, men in porn, whatever it is, okay, whatever scenario that they have, it just does not compare. And if you find yourself having to compare and not find pleasure in the simple life, that's where the problem is. And you'd find that there are people who cannot be turned on by certain things. That's why they keep on escalating because they've gotten so used to the vanilla that they don't find pleasure in it anymore. So they have to escalate and escalate and escalate to find pleasure and they get more and more extreme and that's a problem, especially if you are in a monogamous relationship and your partner is not okay with whatever you're into. Then where else are you going to find that other thing? Outside of your marriage, outside of your relationship is where you're going to find it. And that is something that leads you to cheating, adultery, etc. And so this is why it's important 
to be able to talk about these things in your relationship. Because if you want to explore these other things outside of vanilla, you have to be honest with your partner and say, hey, I am interested in this. Do you think we can try it? And if you try it and they don't like it, you have to be okay with them not liking it. So th that's why it's important to be open to letting your partner know what you're into and what you're not into. Communication is very important. Transparency is very important and consent is very important. It's just important to be on the same page. We have to examine how this, whatever thing you're consuming is affecting you and your partner or the people around you. If you consume it and you find yourself lusting after the performer, then you know for yourself you're being sinful. So if there is shame and guilt and self-harm and all these negative effects, then you know the next step is to stop that behavior and seek help. How do you stop? It's hard to stop. Then that's where we pray, ask for the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and enter into behavioral modification if you need to. Seek a therapist if you need to. And there are a lot of programs out there about like porn addiction and sex addiction and all of these things. Because once you find out why you're engaging in these activities and what you're actually seeking, then you would know how else to replace that behavior with something productive and healthy for your relationship and all of these things.